Welcome back. This is part two of our saga. We're trying to understand our nemesis, spider snail. <laughs> these are these vermeated snails that essentially sneeze on corals and cause a lot of harm, sometimes kill them. We're trying to understand if these snails are linked to human population development. This is the second expedition for this study. And this time we're going to a really close island. Uh, we're going to Tahiti, which is in the backyard of our home island of Morea. Quite a beautiful place to go and it's quick and easy to get there. So we're pretty pumped. After the first part of this study where we went to Mayao, we learned a lot of lessons. One of them was uh, always bring enough fuel to get home. Also, the classic saying, never take a gift snail to the mouth has a whole new meaning. But our spirits are high. We know this area better. We've been here before. The weather conditions are awesome. So it was time for us to just get out there and collect as much data as we can quickly. So we hit it hard. This is very different from part one. So this time we're making great time, we're collecting tons of data quickly, everything's cooperating. Until we realize that we need to dive on the southeast corner of Tahiti. This is a really beautiful place, it's called Tahiti Edi, uh, which is basically small Tahiti. But it happens to be home to a monster. We weren't just dealing with spider snail today, we were dealing with Chiopu. Loosely translated as skull smasher, place of skulls, head severer. This is one of the biggest surf waves in the world, and one that sadly claims a lot of lives uh, of people that try to ride it. We, of course, are not gonna be surfing this wave, but instead we're gonna be counting snails underneath it. We had no idea how this was gonna go. We wanted to get a really thorough data set from around the island, so we knew we needed to sample from this area, but we didn't know if we'd be able to. We were making good time, we figured we would just go ahead and, and give it a shot. It was certainly more challenging than I think we'd anticipated. It's hard trying to count up snails that are the size of pinheads in some cases when you're being thrown around like you're in a washing machine. This is where the expedition kind of hit a roadblock because it took us a lot more time to get these dives done than our previous dives. But in the end, we were able to get them finished. The experience did cost us a few dives at the end, but we had enough data to characterize the island, so it was a huge success. And the weather didn't hold up perfectly well for us on the way home, got a little bit of rain, but our boat driver Jacques is a master of finding tuna. He saw some birds on the horizon when we were leaving and knew that there were possibly fish there and we caught us a nice fresh dinner for the evening. All right, baby, two islands down, one to go. And this last expedition is gonna be at our home island of Morea. We know this place like the back of our hand. What's the worst that could happen? No! It's one without the darkness hiding me for the picture. Lost the value, now my peace. 